Ross Kelsey at the University of Regina has been working tirelessly on the Gender Violence Prevention Project. Tell us what it is. Well, the project was an initiative that uh, came from uh, a number of efforts on campus and of course public awareness around uh, the issue of gendered violence on campus. We went to our president um, and uh, proposed the idea of looking at a more comprehensive kind of picture of what we're doing on campus, uh, what the attitudes and beliefs were of our, of our students, whether they were aware of some of the uh, opportunities that we have for them or resources that we have for them for survivors. Um, and we wanted to try and get a better picture of how many people have actually uh, been subject to gendered violence on our campus. So we had quite a few uh, reasons for, for bringing the project to fruition. We'll get the results of the project in another month's mm -hmm. time or so, but mm -hmm. what have you learned so far as you've been involved in it? That we're doing a lot on our campus, but that uh, it's a very complex issue and that we have people, uh, I mean, gendered violence is uh, sexual assault. The term sexual assault is such a, a wide range, can be from unwanted touching to unconsensual sex. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of people experiencing things that um, are even very hard to articulate. So it's a complex issue that is going to take some very complex strategies to try and address. And uh, I think it's, I mean, a campus really does mirror a society and we, uh, we're struggling to deal with this everywhere. So our campus is no different. And why is this conversation so important to be having to start to draw this awareness about what's okay and what's not okay and getting people to be able to share their stories? Yeah, I think we haven't really talked about it, have we? I mean, it, we talk about it in private. I mean, as women, we've always talked about it. As you know, non-conforming folks uh, have talked about this. Anyone who hasn't, um, it has, hasn't had power in, in relationships and situations in society. I've always had these conversations and now we're bringing it to light. And like you said, the idea when, when you have power in numbers, when people share uh, trauma and stories of trauma, it's very empowering. And um, you know, it, it, it starts to allow that conversation uh, a space. And um, that's really important because survivors of sexual assault uh, and gendered violence need to know that there are places that they can go and that will, they'll be believed and they'll be heard. So that's part of these efforts is an awareness and a space to be able to talk about it, but it also is you know, bringing to the forefront the need to really put uh, resources and to put education and awareness and efforts towards this. I mean, this is, this is a pretty serious epidemic that we have that we need to address on an institutional basis. We, we owe it to our students and their safety. Here at the University of Regina, the latest numbers came out showing that there has been an increase mm -hmm. in, in reports of sexual violence. Why is that? That's a really good question. I mean, that's a complicated question too. It's, uh, it could be for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons that is commonly known is that when you start to talk about this, when you ask about it in surveys or if you, if you bring about uh, events or functions or, or, or a sexual assault policy that we established last year, it's a standalone one, that starts people engaging in that conversation. And uh, I think it's a, a very positive thing, uh, ironically, that, that people are coming forward. It doesn't necessarily mean that there were that many events last year, in that because the last, we had about eight in the, out of the 16 in the last year, and uh, that has a lot to do with people feeling more comfortable and feeling empowered to come forward. So um, I think there's also other uh, factors, things like social media. We were talking about the uh, Gian Gomeshi case and the Cosby case and uh, the hashtags that are coming out around that that are empowering women to come forward with stories and, and really relating to each other. And uh, again, you know, anyone that's, that's um, suffered from gendered violence needs a space. And that happens to, to women, non-conforming folks, and it happens to men too. And that's a whole other realm. We right. hear a lot of concern around people coming forward and not being taken seriously. Yep. Talk about <coughs> why that happens and why that's a problem. Well, I think the idea of coming forward with a traumatic event like gendered violence is uh, takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of strength. It's to, to bring those traumatic events up again uh, is very traumatizing. So if I'm if I'm in a plane crash and I talk about it, people are very empathetic right away. There is no convincing. I don't have to, I don't have to give you details. Somebody would just say that's I understand. That's awful. 
if I come to the forefront oh, with uh, a story about uh, an incident of gendered violence, it's taken very differently, and oftentimes it's the the onus is put on a on the survivor to 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 relive that experience in order to justify why it's uh, why it's suitable to talk about it. So yeah, the culture needs we're seeing we're seeing some change, but the culture is I mean it's got a long way to go. What do you expect will come out of the report that's coming out next month? Oh, I expect to see uh, some asset mapping, looking at our campus and seeing all the really wonderful efforts like bystander intervention that we're doing. The Man Up Against Violence uh, movement is really strong. We have, you know, a, a very active and, and strong women's center. We also have lots of other student supports with our LGBT communi community and we have we have lots of pieces that we need to bring together to highlight and we also need to bridge those pieces as well. We need to do a better job of being able to support survivors when they come forward and we also need to do a better job of making students aware and our community uh, aware of the policies that are there to help them and to assist that process. What are the policies that you want students to know about? What do you want when they're out socializing and when things are unfolding? What do you want people to remember? Well, I think the biggest thing is is that we have a position on campus now uh, solely designated to the personal safety uh, around gendered violence on our campus. We have a personal safety coordinator uh, and that person is always there. We have counselors on campus. We have a, a standalone sexual assault policy that is uh, on our website that any student can access uh, that will be reviewed on a consistent basis and improved. It's, uh, it's important that students know that they are safe to come forward, right? That we will be there to facilitate uh, the process of uh, whatever process they need. And that's, it really needs to be survivor-centered. Thanks for your time today, Ros. My pleasure. Thanks for coming out.